with three as well. As for Jack Lazowski, though, I'm afraid his last match for him against Stuart Bingham will be a, an academic one. Not for Bingham, though. Well, that's the thing, isn't it? Yeah, because he's got another one after that, so that will be big for him. And we'll see whether it's an advantage for it not to be as significant for Lazowski or not, because sometimes, you know, when the player plays carefree, they don't miss a ball. <laughs> That's the danger anyway. That will be table two in due course. Here on table one, Jaguar Don made a very nice clearance to win that opening frame. 79 the break to the pink. Just before this frame gets underway, can I give you some news from the Women's World Championship in Bangkok? The knockout phase has begun. I can tell you, Rianne Evans, she's into the quarterfinals, defeating Tessa, Sand Tessa Davidson. <laughs> Tessa Sanderson. There's yeah, Tessa a name Sanderson, from, yeah, yeah. There's one from the past. Javelin in the heart, yeah, that result. She plays Fatima Whitbread in the semis. Yeah, yeah. Rianne Evans beat Tessa Davidson 4-0. Bei Yulu, who earlier in the week made the highest ever break in the Women's World Championship of 127. She's through also. But Nguyen On Yi from Hong Kong trails 3-2 against Bayar, Sakan, Na and Tuya. I got that right, Dave. I couldn't say Tessa Davidson, but I got that one right. Yeah, it's... Uh Terrific to see the women's circuit having these events around the world. They've already had one in America this season and various other places as well. And Naran Tuya is from Mongolia. So that would be a major upset if she were to beat Nagorno Yi, who, of course, is a main tour player. One final score, Mink Nucherut, the defending champion, beat Mary Talbot Deegan 4 0 to make the quarterfinals. Tessa Sanderson, you'll never let me forget that one, will you? That's going to be talked about in 10 years' time. Well, uh, maybe for younger viewers, little people around the world, Tessa Sanderson was a, a very well known British javelin champion back in the 1980s. Olympic champion. This frame is one of these where reds have gone past the blue towards bulk, so it's a very dangerous table. This is quite a big shot if he's trying to pop this to the middle. Got to be so accurate here. Oh, that's excellent. That's oh. not at all easy by any means. So he's in. He's broken the deadlock and a very impressive start from Zhao Gudong to this match. Six. The next match over on table two is already underway. Stuart Bingham in the balls early against Jack Lazowski, frame one. Yeah, Jack had a bit of a hoo-ha at one, and uh, as we know, he's not going to qualify well. now, so it could be quite an open game, that, I think, over there. She can only suit Bingham, who's a very heavy scorer. At his best, sighted the day. First poke, 138 in his opening match with Judd Trump, although after that, quite a few mistakes crept in.
Έτσι. Έτσι. Twenty four. So far, so good. It obviously helps with the black on its spot. 32. Thirty-three. He made a century this morning, so all seven players have now in this group have now made centuries. One of those players, and he's demonstrated this in this tournament, who's got really good concentration when he's in amongst the balls. Ironically, you know, one of his worst performances in the whole tournament. And this fourth. is his fourth group. One of his worst performances was actually in the final of Group 7 here on Tuesday night to be involved yesterday and today. His final against Lu Hao Shan. He trailed 2-0. Lu had played very nicely to take a 2-0 lead. Thereafter, it was predominantly scrappy. The last couple of frames lasted 39 and 47 minutes. Oh dear me, powering the black, Jeremy not into the target, one. that was a surprise. Well, that's really the first mistake he's made in this match. Trying to force an angle as you say, but that sort of a serene air he had has been slightly broken by that. Higgins comes to the table 41 behind. Well. I can hear some shouting somewhere. Nothing to do with the TV production or any of the the players. I think it's outside of the the hall. Right. One of two halls. This now at the Morningside Arena. It really is a tremendous facility. Home of the. Leicester Riders, one of the UK's leading basketball teams.
clearance here would be a, a slam dunk. Three reds at the business end of the table shouldn't pose too much of a problem. Different story, though, for the three reds up near the balk line. It's a puzzle that can be solved, though. The deficit down to 10 points. The only truly awkward ball on the table is the blue, but by the time he reaches that, it won't be necessary. Although, taking a, a lot of small value colours might bring the, the blue into the equation. And let's face it, Dave, taking small value colours is the way to approach these reds. Yeah. I, I always think John Higgins... He's the most dangerous player in the sport when he's 40-odd behind, 50-odd behind. It doesn't really matter where the balls are, he just finds a way. He seems always to clear up. Put it this way, I think he's the best player I've ever seen at going from Good doing nothing at all in a frame to playing brilliantly. It's not a gradual thing, it's from sort of naught to ten. Straight away. Chip Bingham's won the first frame against Jack Lazowski, who maybe is lacking a bit of motivation. Now he knows he's going to be knocked out here. Whereas Bingham can still qualify for the playoffs. Fourth. Yes, and you know Bingham's desperate to qualify for the playoffs. Important positional shot coming up. I think there's a, a lorry reversing or something like that. The snooker on, lads, come on. Get your act together. Forty three. So Higgins checking the scoreboard with the green. He moves two points ahead in the frame. Forty-four. You see, that's why he's so clever, targeting the black. If that goes in, he'll be ten ahead. And then yellow, green and brown will be enough. He'll be 19 in front with 18 on. Doesn't miss a trick, Dave. No, and I'm sure it's not always that easy to work out the maths when you're down there, because there's plenty else to think about, but he has done... So yellow, green and brown, as you say, and Shao needs a snooker. And it will be another great steal 53. to add to his <laughs> already huge collection of them, John Higgins.
56. Numerically, the brown is frame ball. If he drops in behind the blue, you won't see any positional ambition whatsoever. Just dab that one in. 60. And the task is complete. Sixty-five. Jumping in sixty. Take one hundred lines, Zhao Guodong. I must not miss blacks off their spot. John Higgins makes a break of sixty-five. Zhao is twenty-four behind. He needs two snookers on pink and black against John Higgins. Good luck. If he wins this frame, I'll go out and give him 200 quid myself. Go on, Xiao. <laughs> All joking apart, I'm astounded he's carrying on. I think players of a more fiery disposition might be annoyed with this. John won't bother in the slightest, of course. So is it 2010s or 1020s, Dave? He might take cards, you don't know. Expect Higgins to hit this off one cushion. Hang on, the in off's on. He's OK. Heart monitor to Dave Hendon. I think he's safe, Dave, don't worry. Problem now, you can just lag it or pot it. Yes. Well, I'll double the money now, 400 quid. After he concedes, very brave of you, Dave. Good performance that from John Higgins. He was 41 0 down. Zhao missed a black off the spot. Higgins cleared to blue with 65, and that's why he's back on level terms at 1 1. It is not going to be easy for Xiao Guodong to win this match now. Look at the Chinese player in his seat there. He knows he's thrown away a golden Third opportunity frame. to lead 2-0. Nicely in amongst the balls after winning the first frame efficiently. And then a black that should have been potted with no sweat. Leapt off the table bed after being struck very crisply. Higgins... In with 65, thank you very much, 1-1. One, one. I can tell you over on table two, 
Stuart Bingham won the first frame against Jack Lazowski. And I think he's got a pretty good scoring chance in the second. Well. Higgins, has he found the magic again? That was lovely. It really was. John Higgins won. This was not quite so lovely trying to get reds into play, misses the black, and then we're just looking to see damage had been done. The red has gone down towards bulk. Other than that, there's nothing on. Oh. Yeah, so the red was potable and he has knocked it in be relieved to see Higgins falter after the red went in he must have been thinking here we go again but John Higgins couldn't continue the break well he's completely lost his way here no man's land in terms of position eight I'm not saying Higgins is reliable at clearances, but I remember here, it might not have been here, but it was at the Championship League years ago. He was playing the last group match and he had to win it to qualify and knock another player out. It was 2 2, he was 60 behind. And he got a chance, and the player who was waiting to, for the result upstairs put his coat on and left. He said he won't miss from here, and he didn't. <laughs> so that's how reliable he is when he's got a chance to clear up. Well, that was a, a nice little bump off the middle pocket. Don't know where the angle on the pink is there to go into the bunch, though. It wasn't, but the way he's played that, the, the red at the apex of the pack will go to left middle. So that was Seven. a really good bump in the end. Well, it didn't go. So just seven points. I assume the way he played the pink, he must have thought that red went, but it didn't look like that to me. And for once, it wasn't an optical illusion.
foul. And a miss. Lots of running side on that one. That's Going what on threw six. it wide of his intended thin cut. needs to slow up wow it's held on <laughs> amazing I thought that was in yeah, it just catches the jaw doesn't it that's why I mean the pace it would have gone in but it just caught the jaw and wobbled Higgins needs to be careful here Almost the chance of separation of a red away from the bunch, but at that pace, it was never going to happen. E glide, Rob Spencer declares touching ball. Yes, Rob has the honour of the final tonight. Over on table two, Stuart Bingham will be seething. He has wasted several chances to win the second frame against Jack Lazowski, who in the end cleared green to pink to win it. 1-1. One, one. Lazowski played a very loose frame. And yet, regardless, he won it. I think he's put Bingham under a bit of pressure, actually, because Lazowski's playing like a man who's already out the tournament. But... Bingham is not able to capitalise. He potted a great long yellow and then missed a much easier green from short range, which uh, gave Lazowski his chance there. And you might think, well, Bingham can still win from there. Of course he can. But in his position, he wanted to win 3-0. Yeah, the Zaski victory would be good news for Neil Robertson, who hasn't played yet, but he's got two matches to play, and he might not have that much actually to do. Maybe just one win would be enough. And Zhao makes a complete hash of that one. Well, his bottom from what? distance has been very, very good in the matches we've seen in this group, and Higgins 
Again, knocking a long red in. Forty. It's a big target, isn't it, to go into those reds. A couple of shots time. Fifty. And then you're trusting to a certain degree of luck, but good contact. You'd be unlucky not to be on something. Yes, and a wider area to contact here than normal when the pink is on the, the top of the bunch. Straight into that line of three. And they've opened delightfully. Twenty. Twenty. <clears throat> well, this really does look like a golden chance to go 2 1 in front. 29. John Higgins has not had a good season, but the season is not over. Of course, he always concludes at the Crucible at the World Championship. And if you do well there, certainly if you win it, then no one remembers what else happened during the campaign. He's been in eight finals there in Sheffield. And he's won four titles. Last season he got to the 36. semis once again. So you know, that's the one tournament where if he was going to get on a run, you'd fancy it would be the one, regardless of anything else that had gone on all year. 37. He was the first of the class of 92 win the World Championship 1998. Mark Williams was two years later, Ronnie O'Sullivan the year after that. Between them they now have 14 world titles. Yeah, that 98 championship was remarkable because it ended Stephen Hendry's occupation of the world number one ranking, which he'd held for Eight years in succession. The rankings were a little different then. They only officially updated at the end of each season. But going into that championship, the only way Higgins could be world number one was to win the championship and hope that Hendry lost in the first round, and that's what happened. Yeah, and who did he lose to? Jimmy White, of all people. <laughs> Incredible. 25 years ago now, Phil, all that. Quarter of a century on John Higgins still playing terrific snooker as we're seeing here. Needs this next red and he'll be 2 1 in front. Six. Sixty one. Generally, I'm liking what I'm seeing from John Higgins. He could have a big say for the rest of the day.
73. He's only made five centuries in this group and a chance for another one. That's seriously impressive scoring in such short matches. One here it would be his 30th century of the season. Won. And roughly half of those, Dave, would have been in this tournament alone. Eighty-nine. Ninety one. Ninety four. Got in with a good long red, and the rest of this has been sheer class. Doing this, keeping Neil Robertson and Judd Trump at bay as they try to overtake him in second place on the all-time century list. They've got some work to do. 109. To catch the wizard. 116. In many respects, that's the perfect frame. As Dave said, knocking in a red from distance and then clearing up with terrific aplomb. John Higgins leads Zhao Gudong 2-1. Champion of Champions snooker always hosts the very best. That's why I think a lot of people would love to see John Higgins prevail today and book his place there. Already in the field, the likes of Ronnie O'Sullivan, the defending champion, Judd Trump, the, the Masters champion, and Mark Allen, who's won the, the UK Championship and the World Grand Prix to qualify. Nine players are there thus far, a tenth could join them today. So this is the winner's group prize money. And of course, the, the bulk of the money comes from getting to the, the semi-final or final. If you win the whole group, you're on 10,000, 5,000 for the runner-up, 3,000 for the semi-finalists. That in addition to 300 pounds per frame one in the playoffs and 200 pounds per frame one in the round robin phase. So one player is going to be receiving a, a lucrative amount later. And of course, to be here, Dave, they've already won a, a princely sum from another group. That's right. And uh, we've already seen, of course, Matt Selt, who's not here. He's worked, earned well over, well over 20,000 from the event just by being in groups one to seven. Xiao Kudong hasn't quite looked the same, really, since he lost that second frame when he missed that black. John Higgins made the clearance and he's made a century in the next, so Higgins certainly looking the stronger of the two right now.
The century from Higgins we've just seen was his 13th of the tournament. Bear in mind, he's only played in Group 4, 5 and this. Big news from the Women's World Championship. The Gu On Yi from Hong Kong is out. Beaten 4 2 by Naran Thuya from Mongolia. And that's after Naran Thuya was 2 0 down. 14. Fifteen. Jack Lazowski has gone two-one up against Jip Bingham on the other table as Higgins looks to develop more reds here and has done so very nicely. So this is his chance to get the match won, to get himself to four points and into the playoffs guaranteed. And then it's about one more place, isn't it? Trump, Wilson, Higgins would all be there. Neil Robertson still with two matches to play. He's up against Trump Point next six. on this table. The way John Higgins goes about things is very professional indeed. He's already thinking about another century. He's playing well enough, he knows that's what should happen from here. And that essentially is just how good these guys are. 38. Yeah, John Higgins, he's very rare amongst great champions. He's never really had any coaching as such. He had advice when he was younger from Alan McManus. But through his career, he's not, he's not been turning up with, with coaches or anything like that. He sort of just teaches himself, it seems. did say because of the setbacks he had last 39. season he might consider going to see a sports psychologist I'm not aware if he's done that or not but he was that was in his mind certainly to maybe look into that Does a red squeeze through to middle? If it doesn't, 46. this might be end of contribution. Well, John Virgo says there's always a gap, and he might be right again here. 47. Just a little high on this black, though. So this is uh, potentially the match or otherwise here. If he pots this black. Got this, John. Feel would be in good shape to go on and win. If he doesn't, then maybe a chance for Zhao. And they're all there actually for a counter clearance. 
Can he reach this? It's a bit of a stretch. Got to keep a toe on the floor. Lovely shot. Lovely shot. He's playing some good stuff here. That was terrific because even a tiny amount of side was 54. applied to make the cannon. Yeah, going back to that coaching business, 55. Dave, and I'm a great believer that coaches have helped so many players over the years, but who knows more about the way the game's played than him? One of the game's premier break builders, and when it comes to tactics... 62. He's right up there with the very best as well. Yeah, and surely now he's thinking about the high break, which is in his sights. Jack Plazowski made 142. It's worth £1,000. Higgins can beat it here. Pots this, there's still 75 on. There's a 145 on. This is match ball coming up, and John Higgins has played 70. from 1-0 down really, really well. He made a 1-4-1 in Group 5. Seventy-seven. Seventy-eight. And he made a one four one in group four. interested in this because he's trying to beat Jack Lazowski's high break but Lazowski's on the other table has spotted six reds six 86. blacks <laughs> at the start of that frame so who knows where that might lead Well, this black for the century, and it's two and two frames for John Higgins. It's his seventh in this winner's group. He's queuing like a dream. Vintage and victorious. 101. One hundred and two. So, this red is going to be negotiated, and it is. 110. Zaski still on blacks next door to 72. What a terrific shot that is. OK, the cue ball eventually came to rest on the cushion, but that was a fine positional effort. Zaski's definitely beaten Bingham, he's over the line, it's just a question of he's still on the maximum, it's just a question of whether he can go on and make it, there's a lot of work to do, I can tell you. 
So if Higgins does beat his break, it might not last that long. Either way, though, it's been a wonderful break and confirms Higgins safely uh, into the playoffs. Feeling good, playing well, and clearly very dangerous. Not very often you see two breaks of this magnitude going on at the same time. First things first, 